welcome back guys it's been a while and i wanted to to produce another video this time round, going back to an earlier topic on companies house so you might remember last time we looked at the companies house api so companies house have a variety of different apis and we covered the offices api you might remember that last time so this give uh, provided a list of different directors in a company and we could retrieve all the directors as well as active directors in association in respect to a single company but what i want to now do is look at a company profile page instead so there's another api for this and it is uh, conveniently named uh, company profile and once again very similar to the offices api you can uh, search for and retrieve data relating to a given company so let's take an example so we have here a company called leeds leeds theater trust limited they're a theater and arts business you can see we have a company number, we have the company name, we have the registered office address, this company is active. I can see when they were founded, when they were incorporated, and I can also see some detail around their accounts, when they were last made up and when they are next due. And similarly, I've also got the dates for confirmation statements as well. And then another point of data we have is regarding SIC codes. SIC codes are also, also very useful and can be very useful, especially if you're looking after clients and you want to look at trends within a given industry or industry code. So all of these data points are very valuable for me. Say I'm an accountant, I look after a portfolio of clients. I want to keep tabs on all of my clients and when their account due dates um, are coming up in my calendar. Uh, and this is a real company, guys. So here you can see Leeds Playhouse. This is a real theater and arts business. They're actually long established in the city of Leeds here in England and the UK. So what I want to do is query all of this data. I can copy and paste this into a spreadsheet, but really I want to use some automation. I want to use an API to retrieve this data. So let's have a look at uh, an automation script that I've already built. And we'll look at how we can query this API the company profile API to get some data. So give me one quick moment while I just open up my environment. And while I'm doing this, uh, what you're gonna, what we're gonna see very soon is some Python code that I've built, which essentially pulls together some of the data uh, that we need uh, for the one single company. And we'll look at another example where we'll pull data from multiple companies. So here in this in this code, what I have right now, um, this is a this is Jupyter Notebook. In my first cell right here, I'm importing a number of popular Python libraries. So request requests is a, is going to be needed for this one to query the API. We need requests. Pandas is not really needed, so we can actually um, comment this one out. We're going to need JSON because we're going to be handling JSON data. So the API will return JSON data, which we need to manipulate before we translate across into uh, a spreadsheet. And then in order to manipulate the spreadsheet, I've also imported another package called CSV. So I'll come on to how these use are in a moment. Now, in order to use this API, you will need a key and companies house provide you with a dedicated key so i've got my own key right here um i've only put this together for the purpose of this video so after this video you'll see that this key no longer works so please if you're looking to query data from companies house make sure you sign up to the developer suite on companies house and the developer hub and you'll you can request for your own api and then we need the company number so remember guys this company number ending in 862 I've put here under its own variable. So I've got a variable called API key, which is our API key. I've got a variable called company underscore number, which is our company number. And now I can start to, to code together and pull together the exact script for the API get request. So we're getting data here. So we have the URL, uh, which is the URL here. Essentially, this is the same URL that's given to you here. So here you can go on a get request. This is a URL. So I've taken this URL and you will see here, we also have our company number in uh, curly brackets as well. So what we're doing right now is we are pulling together our uh, URL. Company number is gonna be a, as I mentioned, a, a variable, which is right here. And then we're going to ask for Python to fetch uh, and essentially 
retrieve some data via get requests. So we're using the request library. The URL is as above. The auth key, the authorization is our API key. And now what we want to do is just make sure that this works. So I'm going to run the first cell, run the second, third, fourth, and the fifth. So all of this has worked. You can see the response code is 200, which is a, is positive, basically means that it works. And now we want to start to see the data. So I'm going to run another, another line of code. This time we assign a new variable called data. We take all the JSON from the response and wrap it under this variable called data. And now I want to print data. So I can do it like this, or I can just do data. And then that will print all the data from the API. So what do we have here? Essentially, we have what you see here in a, in a, in a bizarre structure is a series of well, basically a, a number of lines of JSON. OK, so all you have here is just JSON data. You have accounts, you have last accounts, period end on, start on. All of these are data points um, which are in the form of JSON. So JSON whilst is useful, you know, uh, from a development perspective, from a user perspective, it's not. So we want to translate this and move it into a CSV or an Excel file. So here you can see I want things like, you know, overdue, true or false. I want things like next due for my accounts and the date. So essentially what I want is I want next due as a column in a spreadsheet. And I want this date value to be a value as a row in the spreadsheet. So all of this is all very useful. You can see many of it, many of these lines are nested within each other. We need to use another line of code. So we have a new variable called CSV data. And what we do is, is we say we want company name. So let's just go up here. You can see company name uh, leads the to trust. So what we're saying is we want company name as our column. And the data for that is from company underscore name, which is exactly this one right here. So we're saying this is the company name. All right. And all of these values in red are values that I want. So I want company number, status, incorporated dates, etc. And here where you can see hashtags are essentially values that I don't want. So all of these values here um, is a long list of them. I don't want everything. I only want certain values. So I've commented, commented these out for now because I don't need them, but I can retrieve them in future. And then I can now run this line of code. OK, and that's it. And then what we want to do is then translate that, uh, take that data, take all the key values, which are essentially these two are these two values are known as key pairs. And then I want to translate that into a header in the CSV file. And now I want to write to a CSV file. So what I do is using the CSV package, I want to create a new CSV called single company. I want to write all the field names as headers. I want to then write that to a CSV file. All right, and then we can run this one as well. Uh, oh, you can see header here is not defined. Let's just quickly visit that. Uh, it's because we haven't run this, we haven't run this, and then we run this, done. I can delete this one, delete this one. So you can see here a print statement, CSV file created successfully. So let's now inspect our CSV file. It's named single company profile, which I have right here on my screen. And I'll just quickly zoom in to show you exactly how this looks. So now you can see guys using a bit of automation and a bit of Python code, we've now been able to extract all the data and the fields that I wanted in a CSV file. So I've got things like company name, company number, I've got last accounts, when the next due, when the next confirmation statements due, and there's a lot more in here that I can add as well. So from here, I can then produce a report. I can then put this into a calendar. I can create workflows. I can set reminders and alerts. And from this, I can then gauge and understand all the important due dates that are coming up for my clients or my customers, and I can keep on top of them. I can also use this to alert me to changes in, in new, new date points as well, data points. So things like next accounts, whenever they get triggered, whenever they get changed, uh, or you know when alerts or overdue alerts come up as well. So guys, that in a nutshell is the company profile API. And in future, what we'll cover is we'll look at this script again, but this time we'll look at a longer list of company numbers. So what if you want the same data, but you want the, the same data for say 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 company numbers? You can do that using Python. I'll cover that in a future video.
So I hope you enjoy this one. I will recommend that you definitely get on Companies House API Developer Hub. Check out all the um, documentation on this uh, and just get familiar with Companies House. If you are a client and you are looking for support uh, with, with Companies House and with some automation, then I can definitely support you with that. Um, do reach out to us. Uh, I'm just sharing some details up on a page. Email me on skillswithsay.gmail.com. I can support you with APIs, data automation, analytics, you name it. I uh, work with a number of accountants already, and we're doing more and more work um, with, with accountants and accountancy businesses. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. And yes, I hope to see you on a future video. Uh, do comment, like, and subscribe if you've got any other comments or suggestions. Uh, otherwise, I hope to see you in the next one. Take care for now.